Hey, welcome back. We've been talking through a year of physics major concepts, and at this point we're ready to move on to vibrations and waves. That's our new unit, and so we're going to be talking about that today. Specifically, though, we're going to be doing the introduction to it, and that has to do with something called simple harmonic motion and working with something called Hooke's Law. So take a look at the animation here, as well as this diagram on the right hand side so you could think of motion in the vertical plane up and down going back and forth or the horizontal plane going back and forth in this direction so i want you to imagine this motion but in this plane as well and that's an example of something called simple harmonic motion as that motion goes forward we'll give it a more technical definition in a moment but it's a repeating back and forth vibration where the restoring force is proportional to the displacement. So I'll talk you through what that means in a moment. But if you think about these three scenarios over here and what's happening here, in terms of some of the physics concepts we've talked about previously, this is the unstretched or equilibrium position. If you stretch it out, it will pass through the equilibrium position, come to a stop in the compressed position, go back to the equilibrium position, go out to the stretch position, and so on, and that will repeat. Now, if there's friction involved or a real world example, it will go through a dampening process is what it's called, where it loses some of the energy as heat and sound and friction. And over time, it comes to a stop. But if you were able to do this on a frictionless surface, this would happen forever. And we've already talked about energy of a spring, right? So if it's compressed, you've got stored potential energy in the spring over here. If it's in the middle position, it's got kinetic energy. And if it's in the stretch position, it's got that stored elastic potential energy again. And so that process just repeats itself unless there's a loss of energy. Pendulums, when they are at small angles, also work with simple harmonic motion. Okay, and let's think about these three scenarios I have on the right-hand side. These are important ideas for a regular physics class as well as a foundation for a AP physics class as well. When the object, like the mass on the spring, is at the unstretched or equilibrium position as it vibrates back and forth, left to right and right to left, you could say it's delta x is zero. That means its displacement from this equilibrium position is going to be zero. That's where it's going to have the maximum speed, you could say. That's where its acceleration is going to be zero for a brief instant of time. And the force on it is also zero. So this force that we're going to be talking about that's governed by a law called Hooke's Law is a restoring force. So if you have the mass stretched out to the right like we do over here, what would you guess the direction of that restoring force would be? Well, it would be to the left, right? It's a force that is going to attempt to restore the displaced object from its original position back to where it was originally. How about this compressed position over here? If you compress a spring, what would be the direction on this mass right here? Well, the direction would be to the right. So the direction is always in the opposite direction of that of the displacement. All right, let's take a look at our second example where this is working with the stretch position. So in this case, you've stretched it out and or maybe it's returned back to its stretch position on its own. That's where it's delta x change is going to be a maximum positive value like it's going to be in the plus 0.25 range, you could say. So that's the delta x, you could say, for this. Its velocity at an instant of time is going to be zero. It's kind of like saying if you toss the ball straight up in the air for a brief instant of time, its velocity in the y-axis is also zero. It does have an acceleration at that point. That acceleration is heading to the left. Just like a ball tossed in the air still has an acceleration even if it's momentarily motionless. And the force, the restoring force, is going to be at its maximum value when it's fully stretched out as far as the problem is going to allow us to be in terms of the original energy involved. And so that restoring force is going to be the maximum value to the left. And we'll call that a maximum negative value. So I'm going to assume to the left is negative, to the right is positive. And I want you to think about what I'm going to say about the compressed position now. Following the same format as these two up here, think about what your delta x is going to be, your v value is going to be, your a and your f elastic. Take a moment to really try this on your own. Okay, if we think about it, this is what's going to happen. 
your delta x is going to be the most negative here where it's fully compressed as much as the scenario allows and for a brief moment of time its velocity is going to be zero it's going to be motionless for one moment in time at that point you have an acceleration that's going to be a maximum positive value to the right and your elastic force is also going to be to the right it's in the opposite direction of the displacement so in this case we'll call it positive in terms of the direction that's involved and so what we're going to do is take a look at our official definition simple harmonic motion is repeating motion that vibrates around an equilibrium position where the restoring force is proportional to the displacement so what that means is you have a stretch position and that force pulling it back is some value well let's say that is some delta x well instead let's compare it to two delta x if we stretched it out twice as much as before what do you think the restoring force would be well it would be twice as great and if that holds true then we're talking about something that is in simple harmonic motion all right so let's take a look at our official equation here this is the equation you're going to see in most high school physics textbooks and down here this is the equation for AP. I actually like the AP version better here but in either case you've got a spring constant you've got an X up here if you want to write it as an X then you're talking about a position and that would be the position with respect to the equilibrium position so you're going to think of this as a displacement really so that's why I like this version of the equation better is because an x by itself really just means position. This means displacement, which is a change in position. And we want to think of this really as a change in position, you could say, or a displacement. Here, in both cases, we've got a negative sign. And this negative sign just is talking about the direction of the force. So it's saying, be careful, you're going to make the direction of the force opposite that of the displacement from the equilibrium position. Actually, I think I'm going to put this problem on a second screencast because otherwise this screencast is just going to be too long. So part two is coming right up. Stick around, please, for that. Should be a link to it in the upper right and it should be popping up.